In the early days of the internet, radical libertarians were scattered, lonely, and faceless. Without direction, they resigned to scour the web, sifting through content providers in a wasteland plagued by YouTube demonetization, Facebook jail, and covert internet censorship. But then, in 2017, the Libertarian Union was formed. Finally, the average Joe Libertarian could find a thriving community of independent podcasters and content providers, all in one convenient location. At Libertarian Union, we'll always have the latest news, interviews, discussions, and even movie reviews. With hundreds of episodes and more added all the time, you'll always find something fresh at libertarianunion.com. All right, all right, all right. Uh, let's get fired up here. Maximum freedom. Read. Stay on target. Maximum freedom. Stay on target. Maximum freedom. Read Rothbard. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Actual Anarchy Podcast, the podcast where we talk about movies from a Rothbardian anarcho capitalist perspective. And tonight we're going to talk about the ghost in the shell. This will be episode 61 of the podcast. You can find the show notes page at actualanarchy.com slash 61. And we have a special guest with us. Uh, this is kind of a, a new thing in our new format. The first time we're going to have a guest uh, and we're still going to sandwich in that last nighters, a uh, little normie friendly version of the show. But uh, Robert's with me as well. So we, before we bring on uh, Liam, uh, how you doing my friend Robert? Oh man, I'm doing great. I'm excited for this episode. I didn't I wasn't, um, but after having talked to our guests for a little bit, I'm excited for these uh, interesting discussions we're going to have. Uh, this might be our most planned episode in a while, so we'll see. Should be good. Yeah, so without further ado, let's introduce our guest. He's been with us twice before. Uh, actually, he's been with us on each of the versions of our show. He was uh, with us for Reed Rothbard for a New Year's special about Ex Machina. Uh, that one was entitled... Can You Rape a Robot? And then he was on our Valentine's Day special on the Actual Anarchy podcast. And I think it was, what, number five, maybe? I'm talking about her, also starring Scarlett Johansson. And now he's with us on this version, where it's going to be the Actual Anarchy podcast slash 61, but also Last Nighters slash four. At least I think it's going to be. This is an ever-evolving thing. <laughs> We're still figuring this out. But what we decided is that we have been preaching to the choir. Mm -hmm. We have a solid base of listeners and we get some feedback and uh, we get pretty consistent numbers and we're happy about that. But then we're like, well, the name is probably driving people mm -hmm. who don't know what anarchy or, or what the right version of anarchy is away. Mm -hmm. So, but because we still like the actual anarchy name, we don't want to lose it. We, we, you know, we have the audience, we have all that stuff. We wanted to, see if there was a way to repackage it a little bit so it's a little bit faster paced, has a little bit more structure to it, and is shorter, uh -huh. and that we could do concurrently with the actual Anarchy version. So the idea is we introduce the show as actual Anarchy, we talk about random stuff for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, then we switch into normie mode, which then becomes the last nighters, and we do a little brief intro there. We jump right into the Google description and do the movie. Uh, we try to follow some very loosely ever-evolving categories, and then we do our rating and review out of ten now instead of the black and gold, because that wouldn't play well to people who don't understand what's going on. Sure. <laughs> and then we, we do a little end of The Last Nighters, and then we chat for another five minutes while on the actual Anarchy show. And then we still have the opportunity to do Kathleen Turner Overdrive for Turning the Frogs Gay at the end if we want to do that. That's all Patreon stuff at the, after that. See, We'll see how it goes. But how are you doing, Liam? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me again on your new format I, I hope to be invited to all for, all future formats as well uh it, it <laughs> you guys are getting pretty smooth at this intro stuff like it, like that sounds like it's pre-recorded but it's not I, I, I see you saying it so daniel's become quite the host yeah he's he's really good if you if you have some dead air he can just start talking and uh, it, it sounds, sounds professional yeah it sounds so practiced like like how do you say that do that intro again like what do you say at the first the first line Hello and welcome to the Actual Anarchy Podcast. Yeah, it, just, it sounds the same every single time you say it. It's awesome. Almost like he's a robot. <laughs> Almost. We'll, we'll see. Well, yeah. most of him, right? 
Most of them is a robot. Yeah, right. from the waist down. <laughs> robot body. Brain. Nice, nice. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting thing because every movie that you've come on for has been one of these AI kind of robotic movies to discuss, and ScarJo is in uh, two of them. First of all, the man's been the man's been typecast a bit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think I, I said for Ex Machina that was what it was called, Ex Machina. I, I said let's do a movie about AI because I have some stuff to say. And then from then on, you always were suggesting all the every single robot related movie we could uh, we could find. But hey, I, I really like I really like the genre and I really like the topic, so I'm not complaining. I mean, these are a pretty diverse array of movies too. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I would I would certainly grant you that. So uh, Liam, we were telling you ahead of time, and, and we're now telling the audience, the actual Anarchy audience, that we are going to switch into what we call normie mode, and that's going to be the version of the show that's going to be shareable. So if, if you enjoy our content, but the name Anarchy makes uh, you nervous to share it around, we're going to have a version of this that is shareable, and that'll be under the moniker of the Last Nighters. So when you guys are ready, we'll switch over to normie mode, and we'll dive right into this movie. Sounds good. Let's do it. All righty. So we're going to initiate normie mode. Three, two. (laughs) (laughs) That was it? That's the transition? That's it. We're in normie mode now. Nice. Okay. Okay. Well, so you guys, yeah, we're not going to talk about the other thing we were just talking about, that really important other thing. Right. Now we got to do a little mini intro here. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, everyone. uh, Welcome back to The Last Nighters. We're going to be talking about The Ghost in the Shell, and this can be found at lastnighters.com slash four. And uh, my name is Daniel, and my host is Robert, and uh, we're doing this YouTube thing with Last Nighters, talking about movies from a uh, unconventional, a real unconventional perspective. And we have a guest, a friend of ours named Liam. So say hello to everyone, Liam. Hello to everyone, Liam. All right, perfect. Thank you. It's <laughs> almost like he's a trained SEAL. And uh, we're going to dive right into this. Um, i got to get the uh, Google description going. So it's uh, Ghost in the Shell, and this is the live-action version, though I also saw the original anime, which was actually quite good. But uh, this came out 2017, PG-13, two hours long, starring ScarJo. And it got a 6.4 on the IMDb, 45% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 75% of Google users like it. So it's, it's got a little bit of a mixed mixed bag on the ratings and reviews here. Uh, and here's the Google description. In the near future, Major is the first of her kind, a human who is cyber-enhanced to be a perfect soldier devoted to stopping the world's most dangerous criminals. When terrorism reaches a new level that includes the ability to hack into people's minds and control them, Major is uniquely qualified to stop it. As she prepares to face a new enemy, Major discovers that her life was stolen instead have saved. Now she will stop at nothing to recover her past while punishing those who did this to her. So this came out uh, August of last year, box office of uh, $169.8 million. So it maybe broke even. I, m- I imagine this was kind of a big budget deal. Uh, what's your first uh, impression on the Google description there, our guest Liam? I actually really like that description. I think it's pretty accurate and um, it picks up on interesting points. Uh, I mean, I think most people watching this won't have thought of that the emphasis on that terrorists can hack into people's minds. And I know that that's a part of it, but I think it's a really important part because that is a trend that I think will be, and we can get into this later in the show, but I think that is a trend in cybersecurity that we do need to watch out for. So um, I, I, I like the description. And I think that their low rating is probably because people who have watched the original didn't think it was true to the original story or whatever. Cause I thought it was a pretty good movie um, not having seen the original, but so maybe you can, um, say what you think compared to the anime. Well, I've got a little bit of a rant about that, but I'll save that for later. Uh, Robert, what's your take on the uh, description? Uh, the only issue I had was the uh, plot spoiler. So <laughs> spoilers all the time. The the very first line of the Google description is that she's the first of her kind, which is clearly not the case. If you watch the film, she's actually just the latest in a series of her kind. Other than that, sound fine. Well, she's kind of the first of her kind, right? Like, because... The other guy was a failure version, so she's the she out of the successful robo human humanoid whatever she whatever you'd call her, she is the first one that worked. Well, everyone's an individual. I would argue that the, everyone's right. an individual, individual, so they're all the first well. of their kind. Exactly. <laughs> I'm rooting for this description here. I think it's good. All right, Liam's a, <laughs> a Google description apologist. Robert is not so much. Yeah, you know, my only beef with it is that they're claiming that the terrorists have gained the ability to hack into people's mind and her job is to stop it. But she is also a victim of that very same thing by her corporate slash croniest uh, employer who has a very cozy relationship with the government. So you're saying that corporate croniest employers that have a cozy relationship with the government aren't terrorists? 
Oh, hey, touche, but, but I think that the, <laughs> the argument in the Google description would be that they are not. They're the good guys, right? That's well, true. sort of. Yeah, I like the Google description. No, this Google description is it's very woke. It, it, I mean, I, I like it. I think it's good. It, it's really deep. So deep. So yeah. Deep. <laughs> so deep. It's clean. <laughs> So we had a couple of uh, uh, categories that you guys had written down in our pre-show stuff. So Robert, what's your first note there that we can dive into? Okay, so we, we listed a couple of main talking points. And the first one I have is, okay, well, let me just kind of briefly go over my notes here. Um, did anybody get understand why the, the hacker had to go somewhere physically? I have a note here and says, why would the hacker need to go physically go anywhere? He's a hacker, not like some sort of a superhero person. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know that. That's a good question. <laughs> well, wait, where did he have to go? Well, that's just it. It must have been sometime in the beginning because I don't remember what this note refers to. Because I mean, does, doesn't the movie start off with her um, in the tea house, and then all the the tea house gets shot up by the hacker guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not exactly what was going on, but I know you're talking. Yeah, it's basically. So there was a meeting, and then the geisha robot started shooting people, and then she jumped off the building, and um, and basically stripped naked and bashed through the window, um, which was awkward because I was watching that while I was at the gym in in the hot tub, and she like taking off her clothes, and I was like looking around, seeing if anyone could see what was on my phone. <laughs> so. Nice that, yeah, that was, that was pretty. It was pretty weird. I didn't want to be that guy, you know, that guy in the hot tub, looking at some scantily clad women on the phone. There's a guy that does that. No, but <laughs> I would be that guy if anyone had seen me. Yeah, uh, you're that guy. <laughs> Apparently, you are that guy. I, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What? Yeah, yeah. So that was embarrassing. But they somehow find him. And then they find out that he's using all these humans to create their own network. Remember this scene? Yeah. Yeah. And then, so then how did they find them if he was using humans to find his own networks, which is why they couldn't find him? Damn it. I don't remember. But there was, I think there was a reason. No, didn't he want her to find him? He told yeah, he her where to he lure her. He wanted to lure her in so he could convince her to turn against that, that um, crony capitalist, um, you know. So the main crux of the movie seems to be that this, cyber company has kidnapped these people and is doing experiments on them and turns them into these robot people. Um, but then they're trying to eliminate the old versions so that the major is the only one, you know, only the successes exist. Mm -hmm. um, so the hacker guy, played by the guy that used to work, be on Boardwalk Empire, so I was like, oh, I know that guy, um, <laughs> is calling it self-defense, these, these murders that he's doing, because he's you know, killing all these um, scientists and other people that are working on these programs, right? So that would be a point of discussion. Is it legitimate what he's doing, like the Bush doctrine of killing them before they kill him? Or is that, did that point come up with anybody else? I mean, that's a good, that is a good point. Uh, I mean, I think that's certainly something we're talking about. I hadn't thought of yeah. that, but yeah, that's a, good, that's a really good point. Um, okay. Or how about the, uh, the morality of the scientists implanting false memories into the major to give her motivation to fight the terrorists? That seems like a horrific thing. Yeah, that's, hmm. yeah, that is, that's definitely, that's definitely not good. Does that violate the non-aggression principle? I mean, I would she agree. gave I would consent every was... time, right? She gave consent every time. But she was, right? I mean, they, they kidnapped her as she was a, a live human being. Okay, but they... say, say that it started, say that we didn't know that. And it was just started where she was a robot. And they kept, and all we knew is that they just kept giving her these things and she consented. But then, obviously, they, may, they were lying to her about the situation. It was really suppressing her memories or whatever. But she didn't know that, but she still consented. Does that count? I mean, she's an adult. No, no. They were, they were defrauding her. Why? How is it defrauding? If I say... It's not the, informed consent. The... They're withholding vital information. They're, they're lying to her, and the consent is just going through the motions. Like, she doesn't fully understand or have consideration to enter the contract. Well, it's they're not, not a contract, though. There's no property sure rights transfer. Why? What, what, what is the con... What, she's, what is... Off, she's giving her consent. She's coming to an agreement on something that Jealous. they're not... Okay, so that's a good point. No, we got oh. my two points. Okay, I have, I have a few point. things too. I have a few things we could talk about. Um, All right, I just, so I, yeah, I, I was as I was rewatching, I I realized this was like actually a really good movie in terms of content because it, it's about every like all the areas that I'm that I've been interested in lately. I mean, it's about so it's about how this so like there was one, there was an interesting line that was just a throwaway line in the very beginning, and it was. They were as they were flying through the city or driving through the city or whatever. There was a speaker, some like a public announcement that said something along the lines of, "Cyber crimes are a capital offense. 
minimum sentence of 15 years. And because um, obviously this is like a futuristic cyberpunk city where everything is digitized, everything is connected. That's why the hacker could do so much damage in the physical real world. And so that raises several points about, first of all, how does cyber security play in with you know, libertarian theory? Um, also, just what is, uh, like, one thing I've been kind of looking into recently is the kind of, like, what the future landscape landscape of cybersecurity is and, like, and how that relates to blockchain technology and go- and government and stuff like that. And I, I've, I've been kind of di- diving deep on that. So I could probably talk about that for a little bit if, if that's interesting. And then the, okay. other, the other thing is um, just the feasibility of the te- of the technology used there um i mean like like putting a a brain like putting a human's brain to a robot's body and like to what degree can you do that to what degree can you upload your consciousness and then maybe what are the ethical implications of having a person that's not really a person but it's just the mind of the person but it's in a robot's body etc we can talk about that um and then and then also just I, there, it's kind of this is a cyberpunk genre, and it's, it's like a futuristic city. And I, I've been studying cities a lot recently because I'm very much interested in the competitive governance movement. And um, I don't know if you guys listened to the episode of the Tom Woods show with uh, Joe McKinney of the Startup Societies Foundation talking about startup societies. Um, basically, people are making cities all around the world, uh, like free cities, um, trying to get it in special economic zones so that so they're outside the jurisdiction of whatever government owns the land they're on. Uh, and then there's also seasteading, and these are interesting movements. And I think I think they're the best libertarian strategy out there. And I think there's uh, there's a lot of there's a lot you could talk about in terms of the city of the future and how like how this this is a very futuristic city. And there's the so those are like kind of the three things that I I was thinking of. I don't know whatever ones that are interesting we can talk about. All right, well, let's get into the uh, the first of our categories. So we, we bring up a few categories, talk about it for a little bit, and give a little bit of a rating. And one of our favorites is the number of tears jerked. So it's, it's essentially the emotional content. If you've seen the movie Equilibrium, uh, they rate everything with a certain amount of emotional content, and it becomes contraband or illegal uh, over a certain level. So that's why they destroy all the art and all the books and all the music and everything. So let's get into that. Uh, number of tears jerked. Was there an emotional connection for you? And I'll go to Robert on this one. If this movie existed in the Equilibrium universe, it would be completely safe from destruction. There was zero tears jerk from my point of view. Um, I, not that I don't mind Scarlett Johansson as a performer. I think she's pretty dang good. Uh, she's not my favorite actor, but decent. Uh, but I just don't think that she was given any kind of material to work with. This movie didn't connect with me on an emotional level. I thought it was more style um, and, you know, interested in telling what the story it tried to tell. Um, the only time I kind of choked up a little bit is at the very end when she's, you know, talking to her mother. And that's kind of an easy, an easy deal when, you know, you got like the mom who has a lost child and, you know, I can, I can respond to that. But uh, for the most part, I would say that, you know, maybe if they cut out that scene, this movie would be safe in equilibrium. Other than that, uh, yeah, not so much. I didn't really follow her struggle to be a robot and a knot and having Batu try to help her and the alienation she felt. I just, I didn't connect with her on that. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I I tend to agree with you. Um, It's, I mean, it's really hard to relate, you know, to someone who's complaining about being a robot all the time. And you're the only non, you know, you're the only non-human sort of human person on the planet. I mean, you know, none of us are in that situation. So not very empathetic. It, I mean, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. I, I didn't think it was overly dry or that the acting was bad or anything, but I think the story was not really an emotionally oriented story. I mean, there was that this part with the mother, but even that, it was, nah, it, 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 I definitely didn't feel any sort of sorrow while watching it. It's right, so a very low yeah. on the feels for you guys. See, <laughs> I had this, uh, this sense of her struggling with her identity and who and what she was and having these false implanted memories and, uh, when she was, you know, out diving in, in, the, uh, in the waterway, she wanted to be down there so she could feel nothing. So she was like this angsty, nihilistic teenager still trying to find out who she was in this new cyborg body that was being used as a tool, as a weapon by so wait, the crony capitalist movie, this slash movie government. Is an allegory for puberty? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I, I got some feels out of this. 
uh, though they weren't like great feels. They were kind of angsty feels, like uh, smells like Teen Spirit feels is what I got out of it. Okay. Well, as a yeah, an allegory for teenagerness. Uh, yeah, I guess it's been a while since I went through puberty, so I had a hard time identifying. Yeah, I am much closer to that than you, so you know. Yes, much. <laughs> like a year. You're still waiting, right? <laughs> well, I guess I'll 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 go through that maybe next year or something. So I'll I'll see what it's like then. All right, yeah. so very very low on the uh, number of tears, Dirk. Oh, and one more thing. Um, there is a scene where the corporation guy, you know, the main villain dude, and the uh, scientist person argue about who owns the major. So the major is this construct of this corporation that is closely government ties, like you mentioned. And I don't know, should we talk about how – let's just talk about everything, I suppose. So the major used to be a anti-technology kind of revolutionary kid, and then she was kidnapped – had her brain removed, whatever, copied and put into this robot body. And the, there's a scene in the movie where the corporation um, owner and the lead scientist argue about who owns the major, who owns this robot weapon slash tool slash asset. And, of course, the corporation guy saying, hey, we own her. We, we built her. This is our piece of property. We can do with it whatever we want. We could destroy it or we could enhance it we could do put it in a box and turn it off and who cares the scientist is arguing that it's theirs because they actually built it but then there's the also the the unsaid argument of well the major has self-ownership she's a fully conscious sentient creature and she owns herself so i would argue for the latter i would argue that the corporation guy does own the nuts and the bolts and they are it's a private property up to the point at which it becomes sentient, in which case then you lose ownership of it. So does the uh, corporation own the ankle part? Like, could they take back the ankle and she just have no, like no foot? You know what I'm saying? Like, can you like chop off her hand and give it to the corporation? And would that be fine? Assuming she doesn't feel any pain when you do that? I would say that you wouldn't. I would say that once you create her and she assumes, you know, full sentience, and these are the assets that she has, this is the body that she has, then she assumes ownership over that entire body. That would be my argument. Like as a, as a unit, as a whole unit, complete unit? Yeah, all, every little nut and bolt is hers. But isn't that, isn't that pretty arbitrary? Like if, if um, I don't know, say that they built a, a cannon launcher on her arm or something, you know, like some built-in gun thing, and then that was detachable. How dare you? A Japanese person designing a robot with a cannon on its arm? I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy, right? No, but I'd say she had that, and then there was detachable. So it wasn't, it was like, I, I, like let's not get this, just because her body is in the shape of a human, and that means something to us because we are humans, it doesn't really yeah. make it categorically different than anything else. So say she, exactly what she was, but she also had a cannon launcher holster on her arm, and it came with a cannon. And that and when she initially woke up, that cannon was there. Would they be allowed to take – is that her cannon now? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, even if you could swap it out for um, uh, uh, some sort of machine gun or something, or some laser blaster, you could you could swap it out, but it was attached to her in the beginning. Would that be considered her cannon, or would that just be their cannon that they put on her holster? Or where does that – or is that their holster that they put on her arm, or her arm on her their arm on her body, et cetera, et cetera? Well, unfortunately, I think you have to give it to her because otherwise the argument is, does she own any part of her body? In, in which case, is she just some sort of a robot brain? Does she even get to own the brain or does she own anything or is she not a piece of property or does she not own herself? Well, yeah. the brain was does, human, does right? the corporation the owner? I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think this is a, a continuum problem and I don't think that there is a clear answer for it in, in libertarian ethics. Um, although I, I do think that um, there is a kind of a practical way of finding out. And that would be to, if, you know, you go to a, a court system and say there's, you know, a, even let's just say there's not, not even a libertarian society. Let's say this is, you know, not everyone agrees with libertarianism. So let's say just any court system, if you, you have, there are continuum problems where you have to go to a jury and you have to go to arbitrators and judges and they have to decide on where one person's property ends and the other begins. Every society has had this problem. And um, I think that the a court system can, um, would have to decide and it would be cut off somewhere that, I mean, like there's the, the, the dust molecules on her, in her hair that fall off of her hair. Um, and, um, you know, go on the, the seat on the chair that she was on and she leaves. And then she's, she can't say, Oh, you, you, you have my, my dust molecules. Right. I mean, that's a classic, that's a classic um, example of something that people will use to try to thwart the non-aggression principle, throw some, some, 
sort of little particle or, or something and say that that's a, a form of aggression. Well, there's a, there's a continuum and that's what courts are there for to try to decide. So I don't know if there's a clear cut theoretical answer. I think it's really just depends on what does the common law legal system come up with and how are, how are property lines um, drawn in society, in, in the society that they're in. Okay. So that's, I think that's an excellent answer and an excellent response to what a libertarian society would come about or how they would respond to this question. But just from a personal opinion, do you think that she has any kind of self-ownership claim or is she a piece of property of the corporation that built her? I mean, my, my natural intuition is that she, her body, anything that resembles the, her, her human body, is, um, that, that is hers. And if she was given a shirt by them, uh, that they could they could reasonably own that shirt and just have clothed her in it. And if they had bought that shirt and given it to her, I, I think that's fair to say, okay, can you now that you've changed into clothes, like can you return the shirt that was our lab shirt or something? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, intuitively, I think yeah, she owns her body. But I also I, I don't want to get caught in this kind of uh, uh, what's the word like anthrocentric bias that that people often have where you, you you're biased towards the human body you're biased towards thinking that humans are somehow special in, in some way categorically just because that's how we tend to think about it but philosophically there's not really any difference like it i i because I, I don't know if the rocket launcher would be hers I don't know if she was, came in a shirt initially, if that shirt would be hers or, or what, what, where you draw that line. I don't know. I, I don't necessarily have an opinion on that, but my intuition is the body. So it, it's a tough question. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sold one way or the other. Well, it's a good thing but that she's do... mostly naked throughout the whole movie. So <laughs> yeah, the whole right. shirt question is kind of relevant, yeah. I guess. But, you know, in the anime, in the anime version, towards the end, she says, as a sentient being, I demand political asylum. Mm. So she is aware of her self-awareness. Now, the other thing, and this is related to, you know, does the corporation own anything uh, related to her? And it's revealed later on in the movie that they abducted her and mm. implanted false memories and basically destroyed her natural given body, took her brain out and put it into another body and then hacked her brain. So... I think that they have committed a multitude of violations against her and that uh, the whole question of whether the shirt or the rocket launcher is hers or theirs is kind of a moot point because you got to figure out how to deal with the, the massive aggression that's already taken place. I agree. And I also want to say that just kind of amending onto my last point that they may own her foot. I don't know. I, I, I tend to say they don't, but they certainly don't own all of her because her mind is, they don't own that. I, I mean, she's clearly, as you said, a sentient uh, being and therefore has, uh, or at least in, in my conception of libertarian ethics, she ought to have uh, the right of self-ownership. Um, but um, the other point you were making, which I now I just totally lost my train of thought. What was, what was I'm sorry, what, did, what, what, were you, what were you just saying? Sorry. See, I'm going to do the same thing and be like, what the fuck was I just talking about? Yeah, I know. I don't, you guys I, I, talking about the aggression, how they destroyed her body. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they basically, they brain, murdered, and they they basically murdered her. They did murder her. And then they made yeah, a copy they literally did. and put it into this robot body. Yeah, and then they falsified her memories. So they were right. hacking her mind and defrauding her. And Robert, what is it with our last several episodes? It's like they're all related, right? Like this hand cannon thing is like Eve from Wally. And the mind hacking was what we were just talking about in uh, Gamer yep. with uh, Gerard, Jerry Butler. So, like, all of these Either movies are Either we are, are attracted to these movies. Yeah, I know. Oh, you, you know, pop culture is just one big blender, and you just never know what's going to come out. It's just different variations of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it, uh, it's – with so they, you know, they, they got – so here's an interesting take on this. They, they killed her originally. And so did they kill her or did they bring her close to death? They murdered her well, body they, and they, harvested they, the brain. Okay, they murdered her. Okay, so if they murdered her body and then they basically used parts. Uh, they, they, they used parts of her brain. They took her brain and they put it in another body. But, I mean, there's a point there in between where before she died, she was a person and then she died. And then clearly at that point, she's, not a, she's no longer a person now. She's just dead meat right she's just matter just sitting there um and they used some of that matter that was in her body and then they used that as a basis to build another person so to speak so is she the same person she's i'd copy. argue 
yeah, she's a copy, and and they did implant false memories. And and there's another instance of this in in the movie with the the garbage truck driver. He's also given false memories to where yeah. he's led to believe that he has a wife and a kid, mm-hmm. and he's trying to do something for them, and it's like a motivating factor for him. But uh, it's the reality is his his mind has also been hacked, and he lives alone in a studio apartment and has doesn't even have a girlfriend or something. It's a little bit fuzzy in in this live action version, and in the anime you get a little bit more of the back. Background, so it makes a bit more sense. Hmm. Uh, so, so, so speaking on this, the fact that they've been hacked and that they've been given implanted false memories and all this, you guys were getting into a bit of a heated discussion before we started recording about whether or not the major is able to give conform, informed consent. Because at certain points during the movie, they keep asking her, do you give consent for me to do X or Y? Like having to do like recharge her and do different things and diagnostics and whatever with her brain and some such stuff. And I know Daniel was arguing that it's not possible, and Liam was maybe arguing the other side. So I'd like to hear that discussion. Yeah, let, let, let's let's talk about that. And then after that, I'd like to talk about if uh, – I'm just saying this so I don't forget, and we don't have to talk about it. But we should also talk about if if hacking people's minds is actually a violation of the NAP. Um, okay, so, but, 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 so yeah. So my case in, for this is that she gave consent. And I don't have a really strong opinion on this, but I, 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 this is how I lean. She gave consent every time that they modified her memories. And they said, can we modify your memories? Can we delete this? Can we do this? And she said, yes. She, as an adult, has a um, completely developed brain, she said, yes, I give consent. She didn't ask, well, I don't know all the facts. Maybe I should, you know, go and get, get this, get a second opinion or anything like that. She didn't look into it. She didn't um, try to modify her own memories and see what was going on or anything like that. She just gave consent. And so, and yes, they lied to her, but what's wrong with lying? I mean, there was no, there was no contract. Um, and which I think is the case that you're going to probably make that there was a contract. I'd say there was no contract. There was no exchange of value. They just asked if she, they could do something. And she said, yes. All right. So I'll destroy your argument. Okay. Go for it. Sweet. All right. So very simply put, even within the movie, mm-hmm. The doctor who's sympathetic to her even admits to her that the whole giving consent yeah, I know that. is for show and that sure. they don't really need it and it doesn't mean anything. But not only that, but she doesn't have informed consent. She's not aware of what she's agreeing to. They've screwed up her mind. She is not able to make this decision. And uh, there's court case precedent precedents for this. Uh, recently in Miami, a doctor was down at a strip club. And he spent $112,000 or racked up this bill for $112,000 with four different strippers. Goes to court over this because he doesn't want to pay. And the club owners like suing him or whatever. It turns out that the women were drugging him so that he would spend freely. Like he was like basically roofied, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. So they were chemically screwing with his mind. So it's very similar to what's going on in this movie, Ghost in the Shell. And there's no way that he was making informed, conscious decisions to spend that money or do the things that, that were done. And it's not like he roofied himself. You know, it's not like somebody gets super drunk or, or does a lot of drugs and then, you know, they're still responsible for what they've done. No, this was something that happened to him, just like with the major. Right. So, okay. There, so there's, there's a few differences there. Um, so first of all, yes, you're you're right that in the big picture they were for, they were gonna like physically force it anyway. I mean, I I think that's we, we let's let's not bring that into the discussion. Because obviously, that's not okay, right? <laughs> Injecting someone with something when they say they don't want it is not okay. But, but that that aside, so the difference is um, if you get I mean, did they say here have some roofies? Roofies make you lose weight. Like try this roofies out. You know, okay, and then he, he took re- roofies. No, that that's not what happened. They they gave him alcohol, presumably, right? And then they put roofies in the alcohol, and then, um, you know, he, unbeknownst to him, he consumed roofies. In this situation, they said, can we modify your memories? Can we delete your memories? And she said, yes, you can delete my memory. Oh, this memory, oh, it was a glitch. There was, you saw this cat walking down the street, but it really wasn't there or whatever. Oh, can, you, can I delete that? Yes, you can delete it. Now, they happen to not tell the truth about the circumstance of everything. But I, I mean, I, I, you don't ha- I don't think if, if you said this is roofies, 
I mean, I don't even know if roofies are legal. So uh, but let's assume that, that that's out of the equation. You say, these are roofies. This is a chemical compound. This is what it is. Um, but it'll, you know, it'll make you lose weight. Do you, do you want to have some? Can, can I give you some? And then you say, yes, I would like some. And you take it. I mean, that that's really stupid. I don't know if that's illegal or, or should be illegal. I think, I mean, there, there, I guess there's a debate there, but I, I don't think that's a clear cut. That's a clear cut case. Well, for me, it's very clear cut because they implanted all of the false memories in her mind. And then any of the semblance of, or uh, the, uh, the actual live memories that, that have been suppressed, that started to break through, they were suppressing those. And that was what they were asking to delete. And they were lying about what it was. They were lying about how she came to be. They were lying about what her origin was. Uh, they were lying about everything. So they weren't being honest in any of this. And, and so giving her the illusion of giving consent is just that. It's just an illusion. Like she wow. has no idea what she's agreeing to. She has no idea what those things are. They're telling her it's nothing. So I disagree with you. I think that they are violating her every way, six ways from Sunday. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that if I have a, if I have a, 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 a apple stand and I'm selling apples and I tell people that apples will make you live forever and people believe, people believe me. And maybe that's a stupid thing to, to tell people, but let's say they actually believe me and they're that dumb and they buy my apples assuming, or not even, I don't know, not even buying it. Right. Because then that would be like a guarantee of an effect that is then reneged on and that it was canceled the, the, the contract. But if I give them free apples from my apple stand and they, and I tell them, Oh yeah, these, these, um, you know, make you live forever, then I, I, I don't know. I, I think you're right that the overall circumstances of the situation were very bad, and that was definitely a violation of the NAP. But if you look in isolation at just deleting the memory when they asked her, they literally said, this is, you, you have this memory. Can I delete this? And they, she said, yes. I mean, to me, that's like saying, this is an apple. Um, it, it, do you want it for free? no strings attached, not give me $50 and I'll make you live forever. No, just have this free apple because they didn't charge her. I mean, as far as I know, they didn't charge her for those injections. So um, I don't, I mean, yeah, it is, it is a, it is definitely debatable. I don't have a super strong opinion on it, but I, I tend to think that that in isolation is okay. Or maybe not, maybe not morally okay. Maybe I would say you're a jerk for, for lying in the first place, but I don't know if it violates the non-aggression principle. I mean, lying certainly doesn't, doesn't have to violate the non-aggression principle unless it's reneging on a contract and it, thereby invalidating the contract and um, cr creating a, a property transfer, title transfer. So like one other, like, so one other tangential point on this is, so say that, um, I'm just trying to think of an example, like say that someone was uh, abused in some way, and maybe this wasn't even like a, a, a a violation of uh, physical, bodily, or property rights, but this was in instead maybe emotional abuse. Like they, like there was a guy and say he had a daughter and he he cussed at his daughter uh, and called her very bad names and humiliated her and stuff that's not illegal necessarily, but it's not. It's like really messed up, bad stuff that only a jerk would do. Um, and then say that um, that person manip used words in a way that um, manipulated, that repressed the memories of that abuse and that manipulated that person to, to act according to that person's desire. But this is all verbal. This is you all mean like in Get Out, like another movie that we've done. Oh, really? I don't, <laughs> these, I don't all, know. these all tie together, all these movies. <laughs> right. So uh, if someone was using words, let's say it was, it was words and it was not in the chemical injection, and yet they achieved all the same ends. They repressed the memories. They, they were very good manipulators. Maybe they knew hypnosis or whatever. And they, they, but they used words to repress the memories and make the person do whatever they wanted. Is that, that, that I mean, to me, that's clearly not a, a, a violation of, of the non-aggression principle. So wait, are good. you saying that uh, hypnosis with the intent to do harm is not an NAP violation? Yes. Daniel, you've seen Get Out. Would you, would you agree with that? They were doing it to uh, make him murderable. Was, so was, but do you think that hypnosis was a part of the violation or just when they started physically assaulting him? Well, hold on. Let, let's, let's separate these two things, right? If, if, I, if I come up to you and I say, come here, and then someone else comes in. When you come here, so you can get in line of the site, and then someone shoots you with a sniper rifle. Um, me saying, come here, was murder. Like, part, part, I was party to murder, right? But that's not to say that just saying come here is 
at all bad. It's not bad at all to say, come here. I mean, I'm saying it right now, right? So doing hypnosis is totally fine, but doing hypnosis to kill someone is not fine. And, and it, it, doing hypnosis, like if you, all you did was hypnosis, but the hypnosis was to get someone to die, that's that, like saying, come here. Um, well, it sounds like you're reversing your position, sir. Just before no, you were I'm, saying that doing all that was not an NAP violation. Yeah, right, because no, 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 no NAP violation was ever committed, right, in this, in this hypothetical situation, right? Um, you, you're Causing you're the emotional being, duress, yeah, all yeah. that depression, whatever, is not an yeah. NAP violation it, to this is vulnerable it? person? Well, maybe we should have this conversation. Is that, is that uh, well, an NAP violation? You, if you were to mentally impair somebody, put them in a suggestive state, a la roofing or hypnosis, and then taking advantage of that person based on that, causing them to be emotionally duressed or whatever, mm-hmm. sure sounds like it. Okay. Like when they when the, when the strippers roofied the guy and then took him for a hundred and whatever thousand dollars and stuff. So it sure sounds like he's not liable for that money. I mean, that, okay, that's an interesting position. I don't, I don't, I mean, now the roofies thing, I'm, I'm with you. Um, the hypnosis thing though, I don't think many libertarians would agree with you. I really don't. I think, um, so you're saying that just by talking to someone, if I say, imagine you're in a chair and, and you're floating in the air and all this stuff, and then you get in a suggestive state and then I say, do this, um, or, or whatever I said from there on, I can, I can, ver- I can orally oh, wait a minute. NAP violate Hold on. What? Hold on. Okay, yeah, go. The movie Get Out, and I'm using this as a basis of reference, and I'm sorry sure. if the people listening I, to this haven't heard, seen that movie. I haven't, but okay, go on. Uh, the main character is hypnotized mm-hmm. against his will. Mm-hmm. He is not asked, hey, I'd like to hypnotize you. Mm-hmm. It was sold to him like, hey, let's have a conversation, and I'm a therapist or a psychologist, right, Daniel? And like, I'm going to help you not you know, smoke or whatever. But at no point... Was he like, hey, I'm going to hypnotize you, and then, you know, there's no, there was no consent given, as I recall, from the guy. Is that correct, Daniel? If I'm remembering this correct? Uh, that is correct, and she actually started doing it hours before at, the, at their little lemonade sit-down. Right. She was swirling the, the teacup thing right when he arrived, right? Right, right. But we should really get back to Ghost in the Shell, because we only have, like, 15 more minutes in the show. Well, this, 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 we might need to go into, like, turning frogs to get time. So... It sure seems to me like if you, you need to be able to give consent in order for anybody to put you in that kind of a state, whether it be through chemical means or through this hypnosis situation, whether, regardless of whether you believe in hypnosis or not or whatever. If it, it's, a, it's a real thing, I would think that before you hypnotize somebody, you would need their, their consent. Okay. So, um, yes, hypnosis is 100% real. I, I am, I've studied it a bit. It's completely real. So it's not a make-believe thing. But um, and, and ethically, I, I believe that trained hypnotists do ask for consent before trying to do any sort of persuasion techniques on someone. So I think that's a kind of like a common sense ethics, but it's not necessarily like uh, the libertarian ethics that are, could be the basis of a legal system. So that so I think we can kind of separate those two concerns. But um, so first of all, um, hypnosis is not as cut and dry as maybe a movie might portray it to be. Um, I mean, hypnosis is, it's not that you can just control someone. It's just that they're more suggestible. And what you're doing is you're getting them to put their brain waves in a certain, uh, and this is when a neuroscientist will probably be listening to this and say that I'm completely misrepresenting this, but you're getting your brain wave in a certain state where it, where it doesn't, you use all your all your decision making faculties to full capacity. So you you take suggestions without critically analyzing them as much. But that's very much on you. And um, I mean, some people are just very suggestible in general. Um, and some people are you can never hypnotize them. They're completely unsuggestible. Um, but but you but what you do is you walk them through something or you spin stuff or whatever whatever you do and you get them to concentrate it and get their brain in a certain state in which is suggestible. So in in order to say that someone who was hypnotized is now being taken advantage of. I mean, that you have to take into account the fact that everyone has a different level of suggestibility and some people, uh, it's rare, but it's true that some people will kind of just do whatever people tell them to because they're just that suggestible or they could very easily fall into the state and you could tell them like, go do this and they would just do it. And then they, they later they'd be like, I don't know that you just said to do it. That's why I did it. But they're not like, they're 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 just very suggestible uh, but if you said like uh, i mean i don't know like go you know blow up a car or something and you're saying it like a joke 
I mean, I guess if you really tell someone to blow up a car, that, that is that is different. But if they otherwise, well, hmm. okay, here's a better example. If I, if I say go jump off a bridge, right, and this person mm-hmm. is very suggestible, and then they go jump off the bridge, then that's not murder. You didn't murder them. You just said jump off a bridge, and then they did it. I mean, some people are emotionally fragile. Um, some people will jump off a bridge if you say go jump off a bridge. I mean, again, it's rare, but it's possible. And I, I, and that, that's kind of where this whole hacking thing, hack, this whole line of hacking and memories and, and, and then getting – and, and then substances, this all, this all gets really blurry. And I think it really breaks down when, it, when, you're, when you're talking about um, it can, if, an, if words can violate the non-aggression principle. And it, I think it's a very problematic position to say that they can um, because they're like, again, you can think of a situation where someone is in that state where their brain, if they get the trigger, the, the verbal trigger of if the sound waves ripple at a certain rate that goes into their ears and then goes to their brain, if the right, if the right pattern goes there, then they will go and jump off a bridge. And if you, and you could, and you could be the one to say the thing, even intentionally, maybe you want them to kill themselves. Maybe you're a jerk. You could say, go kill yourself. And then they actually go kill themselves. And, and if they do that, I would say intuitively that you are an asshole for saying that, but sure. is that illegal to say, go kill yourself? That's a radical stance. I mean, what if you just say, I don't believe that um, the, the wage gap and what if that is so offensive that they go kill themselves? I, I bet that's happened. I, I, I bet someone has been so upset about the wage gap that they have attempted suicide. I'm sure that's happened. So like where, where does, what, uh, what point can you draw lib- uh, liability for, for your words? And then, that then comes into another, uh, you know, another continu- continuation problem like we were talking about earlier, where, okay, if the words are okay, then is hacking okay? Because hacking, you're, you're also just sending information at a computer, or at, I guess in this case, you're just sending information digitally at someone's mind. It's just like sending information through sound waves. So why is information uh, not a, a violation of the non-aggression principle? I mean, th- th- I mean, it's a tricky question. Um, I, I think it's pretty clear cut that when you have like roofies or some sort of substance, that's in the realm of of like chemicals and poisons and it's kind of a more understandable uh, we we have a more intuitive we have a better intuition of it and a more developed legal framework for thinking okay well if someone was put was poisoned with plutonium or whatever what, what is the what not plutonium what is the um that that radioactive poison that kills people if you, if you poison them and they die then you killed them even though you didn't literally slit their throat you just gave them that poison and they, they died that's been around that's been a concept in law for many years i think it's pretty clear that poison comes out on the side of illegal. Roofies come out on the side of illegal. But on the information front, I think it's. I think that saying "go kill yourself" should be illegal, even though it's reprehensible. And I, I'm leaning towards saying that hacking is no different. I don't really see a much of a categorical difference between hacking and speech. Um, the only okay, wait, caveat wait, wait. there. I, just have, I, sure. I hate to interrupt you, but sure, no, no. I have a question for you based yeah. on this line of what you're talking about. Do you believe in Manchurian candidates then? Um, that, that's the concept where the, the person was put into uh, – what is that? What is that? Is where you put Essentially into mind-controlled assassination, like MKUltra level. Is that like where you get – And I didn't know what I was doing. I was given a certain number of code words, and then, you know, then I went and killed Bobby Kennedy or whatever. Oh, so wait, why would that? What what is your question about that? Well, you're talking about if you know information, you're just giving somebody information, right? You're just giving, mm-hmm. you're just saying this certain number of words. I don't know if you saw the movie uh, Civil right. War. There's no, yeah, and so the, and then the which, difference is, right? Did a non did the NAP ever get violated as a like 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 as a result? So uh, so like let's just let's go like. For again, like if I say come here and you come here and I'm and I'm not just like some guy on the street like oh could come here like just like hey buddy and then there's another sniper there's a sniper who just happened to shoot that's different like I'm working with a sniper and I say come here you come here and then you get shot and killed that was there was a non-aggression my words aided in the in the murder uh, and you didn't have to follow my instructions but you chose to and I said come here and I was working with the murderer and he shot you that led to a nap violation right so but, wait. Is is you've seen the movie Civil War? No. Okay. Well, there's a character named the Winter Soldier who is a Manchurian candidate type person who's been brainwashed, mm-hmm. and when he hears a certain series of words, he basically turns into this mindless mm-hmm. killing machine type thing. He's very suggestible, sure. and then he follows a certain set of programming that has already been done to him. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that he's still responsible for his actions? 
Good is question. Sirhan Sirhan responsible for killing Bobby Kennedy? Well, I think the question there is to what degree does he have control over that situation? Um, like if he, ha- I mean, if he genuinely has no idea, like, so say that I invented He wouldn't have done it otherwise. If right. you take away the programming and the whatever, if he wouldn't have done sure. it, I would say he's not responsible. But if you put that programming in and now he's going to do it, that seems to be the thing yeah. that caused him to do it. So, uh, yeah. So if you invented a machine that could just, and like, let's say that my mind had nothing to do with it. It was a machine. It was like a metal exoskeleton. And it literally went over your whole body, and then it would move all your joints, and it would just control what your body does. Your mind is just sitting there, not even controlling your body, but but there's this, like, robot exoskeleton that controls everything that you actually do, right? So your mind is like a captive inside your body, okay? So imagine so you're, that. You're, yep. you're in Get Out or Society. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, Patty, or, or Kingsman. Kingsman, the, the plot of that was they play a certain sound or a, a signal, and then everybody goes crazy and kills each other. Wow, okay. I, I do not know these movies, but... So say you have that sort of, of thing on you, and then someone is remote controlling you, and they tell you to pick up a gun and shoot someone, and they're, they're it's con- gamer. It's gamer. Oh my gosh! It's like so, every movie. So oh man, man, I and I here I am thinking I have original thoughts. No, apparently, apparently not. But no, um, all been done before. I know. Seriously, um, I bet I bet this exact discussion has been had at least twenty times in the last year. Um, but um, if you shoot someone and you're wearing that exoskeleton that's controlled by someone else, you have no role in it. I would say you're not guilty. You're just you're just along for the ride. In fact, in fact, um, in that particular case, because there was actually physical pressure applied to your body, I think it's just a reasonable um, case to be made that you would have a uh, you know a lawsuit against whoever was controlling you at the time. But um, I, to take that analogy towards towards hypnosis, I don't think hypnosis actually works like that. So in the real so in the real world, I wouldn't take um, I would blame people if they they killed people because you're not that what they, suggestible. Um, what if there was a chip in their brain or right. their brain cells were changed like in Gamer? Yeah. So in that case, if they literally had no control over what they were doing, and if that was actually the case, just like the exoskeleton example, I would say they're then free. Um, they're then free, but and it's a, it's a tricky. Uh, they're, they're free from charges, and that's a. I mean, that's a very tricky question because also then that leaves open the you know the negligence um, aspect where if you leave your say you have a chip in your brain that controls everything and you have nothing to do with it, but and you leave it completely unsecured, what meaning anyone can control it. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, if you get hacked and you really took no precautions, it, there's a case to be made that out of negligence. You enabled this to happen. Um, so wait, so is is the major negligent in the movie then? I wouldn't say so. No, we're still talking about that that movie. Yeah, we're still talking about Ghost of Believe it or what, not. What did <laughs> the she major... didn't take any action to prevent the hacking? In fact, at one point she voluntarily gets hacked. Sure. I mean, I I think that in that case, if the major violated the non-aggression principle, the major would still be held accountable because of, yeah, because of negligence maybe, or maybe a variety of other factors, or maybe because major has more agency than we really, than. So she, the, she was culpable in being abducted and having her body. No, murdered. Not, not in being abducted and all of that. But if the major, if there was like some child walking down the street, walking home from school and the major just went up and, and they said like, go kill the child. And then she just shot the child in the face. Um, and let's say there wasn't uh, like some one of those crazy scenarios where that child has a, like a bomb or something, or like, they, they told her that the child had a bomb or whatever, some weird edge case. Like, like say it was literally, they said that we want you to, this child is literally a child that is completely innocent. And we just want you to kill this child. And then if the major did that, I think that would, even though the major was completely misguided, thinking that the major thinking just completely misguided, completely trusting this organization that was not trustworthy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I would still think that the major would be culpable for having killed the child. Okay, so wait, it sounds kind of like you're arguing for positive obligations here, that she has some sort of obligation to put some sort of security on her brain slash body slash control mechanism. No, I, I, I don't I don't think that that's the case. I mean, again, this is one of the was I think this is like one, this is one of those situations where I don't think there's been a lot of precedent for this until recently. And may, I'm sure uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Stefan Consala would have some really good thoughts on this, but um, much more than I can, I can bring to the discussion, but. (laughs) Okay. So just to be clear, you're not arguing for positive obligations. Like if I have my car in my driveway, I don't have an obligation to lock it in order for it to not be stolen. Right. To not be, Mm -hmm. to not be culpable when it gets stolen. 
Right. Um, not me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like the difference between um, between uh, like ma- like uh, what, what's it called when you you don't mean to, is it called manslaughter when you don't mean to kill somebody but you act but you do on accident. And yep. okay, so okay, so like say that I'm driving and it's dark and it's like a corner on the road and I'm just driving and then some someone's like in the road and I didn't mean to and I just ran into them and accidentally killed them. But maybe even they were somewhere they really shouldn't be and it was hard to see and it was very understandable. Anyone, no matter, I was even driving the speed limit, everything. Um, okay, that's manslaughter. That's uh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, maybe there's some penalty for that, but it's not huge. Now, if I dr- drank alcohol and I drove and I hit someone in that situation, what, like, what is your assessment of, of that situation? Like, like, like how do you, um, okay. yeah, I mean, that's a judgment call. I, okay. I would think that would be a private property situation. Or, okay. With all, the, all, those, all those issues. Here's another, here's another example. I'm on the top of the empire state building and I have a brick and I'm like, ha ha ha. And I just throw it off the empire state building. Okay. And then it yeah. killed somebody. Sure. Did I kill them? Did I murder them? You sure did. Okay. But I didn't mean to. Right, like but it you were been... absolutely being reckless. Absolutely, yeah, you were. Okay, sure. You, did, you so... showed a wanton disregard for human life by right. throwing a brick off the entire state building. Okay, right. And it's like, okay, but what if I had a mach- Okay, but what if it didn't hit someone? Right, that wouldn't be mm-hmm. illegal. I mean, maybe damage the property of the ground below it or whatever. Okay, like that aside, or or maybe I had a. What if I had a machine where I would launch the brick, but it was like a really smart computer. Um, with cameras and it could calculate exactly where to launch it so it would definitely not hit anybody and then it was fine right that would be fine too so you're 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 free to launch things off of buildings um you're free to you know set up that situation and launch things off buildings have a brick launching machine that doesn't hit people um but i don't i don't think i'd be wanting to walk walk around new york city without knowing that there's bricks being launched but okay hey no it it, it only hits the terrorists it's uh it's it's a really good defense mechanism. Oh, it could just it could decide who a terrorist is too. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, terrorist. exactly. Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, and by terrorists, of course, they mean libertarians, right? So we, we clearly, should, clearly, we should watch out. Um, uh, but it, anyways, it, in that situation, right, Lee, Lee, before you before you yeah. go, I just want to ask you this: Have you seen Silence of the Lambs? <laughs> no, I have seen barely any movies. The only movies I've seen are the ones we talked about. Sir? You are on the wrong podcast. <laughs> yeah, you've been on our show three times, and what and we I've do seen is we three talk movies. About movies. I've okay. only seen three movies ever. So, um. all right. Well, the the point I wanted to make was in the Silence of the Lambs for offending Clary Starling, played by Jodie Foster. Miggs is spoken to by Hannibal Lecter into swallowing his own tongue and dying, hmm. just using words. So Hannibal Lecter, in my view, murders Miggs. Oh, okay, interesting. I by like getting that. him to swallow his own tongue so that he can't breathe and he dies. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that you actually can't die from swallowing your tongue. I, I could be wrong about that. So that's kind of a plot hole, if that's true, or I'm very wrong and that's embarrassing. But um, I wouldn't say that that's the... Okay, that's very interesting. So we just clearly just disagree on this. I mean, I don't think that if I, if I say swallow your tongue um, or whatever, if I say the words that get you to swallow your tongue and then you do it and I didn't touch you and I didn't like point a gun at you and say swallow your tongue or whatever, I'm literally just convincing you um, I, to so me, wait, that's, Liam, do you not believe in the brown noise? The the brown noise. The brown note. The brown note. The brown noise. You play that note. Yeah, it makes you it makes you shit your pants. Um, that seems like a safety violation. Yeah, I mean, who knows? You're disrupting. I mean, yeah. I mean hey, it, it's a, again, it's a continuum problem, right? Like, I can shine a flashlight at my neighbor's house, but I can't shine a a laser beam that burns through the door, you know, like but at what point is the flashlight, those photons, whatever the intensity of that, what, what if, point what does if that powder be? lives in there or Dracula? Well, you know, I mean, you know who Dracula is, right? He was in a movie too. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen that one either, but I know who it is. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, but I don't mean into the house. Uh, I mean like at the door, like in, at the front door, the light doesn't get in the house, let's say, even if Dracula's in there. Right. I mean, I would say, line. you know, if, if the property owner can establish that there's been harm done, you know, yeah. I, think th- I think that's an NEP violation, hmm. right? Harm. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah. Right, well, that's, and that's been our show, everyone. <laughs> We're at an hour and two yeah. minutes. It's our show on Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I do suggest the anime, because yeah. the anime version, it, it's uh, very stylized. It has a very nice ambiance, the, the world building that 
Robert and I talked about this in our uh, mm. Kathleen Turner Overdrive in the last episode, but there's there's a definite sense of place and, and feel uh, that they develop. And then the music is really good, too. It's, like, super eerie. Mm. It's got, like, these um, very uh, isolated drum noises, and there's weather that's kind of, like, part of it, like rain in the, in the city. So yeah. I, I really enjoy the anime. And I think that one of the problems with the live-action movie was that they were trying to stay true to the anime, the source material, but they were like so familiar with it that they didn't understand that somebody totally new to this entire universe wouldn't pick up on some of the cues. So like the, the garbage guy who had the imaginary wife and kids, like I didn't understand what was going on with that until I saw the anime version. And then they give a little bit of the backstory to that. So I think it was a case of like the professor knowing too much and not able to relate it to the student. Oh, yeah. Right. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a few episodes, uh, maybe like t- two or three. Um, I thought it was, it, it was like, it looked good. I, I, I didn't continue watching, but I, I really like the cyberpunk genre. I don't know why. I just think it's like super cool. And the way that, and I agree that the, the, the world building in both the anime from what I, from the little I saw of it and in the movie, I thought this was one of the best futuristic looking cities I've, I've seen. Unlike in like Blade Runner. I mean, I only have seen the original. I haven't seen the new one. But I thought that was, I mean, I don't know if you guys saw that. So I guess I've seen four movies. Um, Blade Runner, um, I mean, that was just a depressing looking world. Um, maybe it looked good back when, or was it in, in the, made in the 70s or something? Maybe like 80, 82. The 80s, okay. Maybe that looked cool in the 80s. It looked terrible now. It looks absolutely depressing. Um, but, I mean, I, I thought that this depiction of, I guess, Tokyo in the future looked pretty cool. Um, and, yeah. I do I do remember getting good vibes from the anime, but I should revisit it. I just don't have a lot of time to watch TV nowadays. Well, what I'm talking well, about Daniel, is the, the know... movie that started it all, not not like the – I know oh. there's a whole bunch of like episodes oh. and stuff in between. There's a, there was a movie that started it all because I watched a TV uh, uh, anime series. Yeah, that's yeah, after. Yeah, there's Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. There's Ghost in the Shell 1, Ghost in the Shell 2. There's all kinds of Ghost in the Shell stuff, plus an original manga, oh. I believe by Toshiro Mafun. Okay, so I haven't I haven't seen that then. All right, well I, I highly recommend it, and maybe maybe what we should do is watch this movie again and then try to try to do a, a focused episode on it. Because one of the other issues I wanted to talk about was the um, the SJW panties in the bunch uh, component because people were all up in arms about ScarJo whitewashing this Japanese oh property, yeah right because yeah. in the original it's you know Japanese people it's an Asian city and they've got the, you know, ScarJo playing the, the main character. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. I don't, I mean, but I, I don't remember the, you know, the anime character looking very Asian. If, if I recall, um, I mean, I, I think that they ca- the cast seemed good to me to tr- seem true to what I remember the original like dr- drawings to look like, but yeah, I mean, that is, you're, you're always going to get outrage over that. And and then they have the reverse version where then they replace like I, I I think like both both sides here kind of have some sort of at least probably should do some less complaining than they do uh, like the social justice warriors will get upset when they're a person of color not to be confused with a, a colored person a person of color um, is replaced by a, someone who's white. But then, like, I know there, there's there been lots of remakes where they take a, a white character and make them black for clear social justice reasons. And um, and then I have seen a lot of uh, libertarians and um, more right-wing people um, who, the same people who say, oh, it's fine, it's just Scarlett Johansson's made by an American company, like, it's, you know, they're giving all the excuses for that one way. And then when they replace Annie with someone with a black girl or whatever, or some, there's lots of examples of this, then they get like, oh, what, this is just pandering to the social justice warriors, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, some people, you know, some people like having a black character replace a white character, you know? And some people like having a white character, they think Scarlett Johansson does a good job and is qualified. And I agree, I think Scarlett Johansson is qualified to um you know to replace whatever i mean i'm not even replaced to play this character i think she did she looked the part i thought it was i thought it was a, a good job on her part but uh, i mean i and as much as sometimes i cherish the memories of some characters that were maybe one race originally and then remade to be a different race i i, I kind of have i i don't want to be um i don't want to overly complain about these things because i do think that the studios ultimately, they, although they may have a social agenda, 
ultimately their only agenda is making more money and they think they can sell tickets of to uh or copies of a, of a movie that has a black character replacing a white character and i think that's totally fine and that's what the i think that's what the market wants and to the degree that it's not it's the degree that they won't do that so i i try not to um complain in either way and, and i like to be kind of fair and balanced in this you like yeah i uh, i always fall <laughs> i always fall back on my standard response to this question in that the social justice types come at it from a super privileged position <laughs> where they don't have their money on the line yeah Right. Like these people are risking hundreds of millions of dollars and they're hoping to get a return on this money. So they are casting who they think will sell tickets and get butts in seats. And these social justice types are like, well, you should make the movie how I want it to be made yeah. based on my zero dollar investment or my ten dollar ticket price no. investment. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put all of my negative eighty thousand dollars of student loans towards making this video, making this movie. But there, I, there certainly is a lot of pandering that does go on. To a vocal minority, well, though, I think they over pander. But I also think it's not a big. I don't care. I also think it's not a big deal, and it's something that we should probably just get over, like like in any in any of these circumstances. Now, there's like Star Wars, which I, I saw. I didn't see the most recent one. I saw that whatever the first one that it was acquired by Disney, that that first, you know, what I'm five about? movies. Oh, five. Oh, five. Movies. Okay, okay, yes, you're right. Oh my god, five. Wow. No, definitely not six. I definitely haven't seen six movies. But, yeah, okay, um, you've seen The Force Awakens, yes. Okay, so The Force Awakens. I thought that was social justice warrior garbage, and that they basically butchered the story and butchered a bunch of stuff. I mean, it, to... Oh, well, you it, should watch the latest one. Then. Yeah, I, I, I probably will at some point, but I don't, I'm not going to pay to see it in theaters or whatever. Um, but um, I thought that was bad, but, but they what they really did there was they really, like... They, they ruined the story, in my opinion. And I, I understand. I, I have friends who really liked it, and I think that's fine if you like it. I, I don't hold anything against it. I just didn't like it. I thought it was too pandery. Um, and I, but, but if someone's just a different race, and it doesn't really affect the story, it, I, if you can't get past that, I mean, to me, that's just really that's either uh, racist or immature, depending on how you want to cast it. But it, it, it's just like, okay, so someone's white, and they're not, instead of Asian, even though they're in Japan, like, okay, like, but you can't look past that. Or someone was in the original was white and now they're black. Like, like it's not like crazy. It's not like they're playing a movie where this is like a black person in the KKK. And it's about the KKK and this person's like the leader of the KKK. And then they Dave, cast Dave Chappelle did that. Oh, did, did he? Well, uh, okay, yeah. okay sure. Oh, like, oh, sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, I might have seen that. Um, or maybe I've just seen a thumbnail of that. But, all right, well, let me ask you this. I saw this, this morning, and it's sort of related to all this. Uh, there was a comedian who got offered a contract with Netflix to do a, a special, and you know they've been doing a, a bunch of them. Chappelle just did a new one. Amy Schumer's done one, and Cat Williams has one out, and um, someone else who uh, kind of a, a bigger name. But this woman this morning announced that she wanted people to boycott Netflix to support her, claiming that Netflix is being race and sex biased against her because they only offered her half a million dollars to do this one hour special. <laughs> oh, uh, but Amy Schumer got 11, Amy Schumer got $11 million and I guess Chappelle and someone else got like $20 million. So she's, <laughs> she's making it into a, a sex and race thing, even though the people she's comparing herself to, she's a black woman. She's comparing herself to a, a white woman and a black man. Uh, so well, like if, if She's comparing herself to far more successful comedians. The, yes, yes, and that is the point. Uh, and so she, I, I saw that there were a bunch of uh, a bunch of comments on this because I think it was like a Facebook post, and for some reason it showed up on my feed. I don't know. They're changing the algorithm, so you see more like non-page stuff. You see more like individual person stuff. I don't know. It's weird. But uh, it seemed pretty ridiculous to me, and most people are just like, well, you've been in like three movies in a bit part. I mean, what do you expect? You know, like Amy Schumer was in a hit movie over the summer. Uh, she sold out Madison Square Garden. Uh, Dave Chappelle is a big name. You know, A-lister. You're like a C-lister, if that. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Well, I mean, you guys, I, you guys hear that um, the controversy, quote, controversy, with the reshoots about that movie with um, Mark Wahlberg and the other lady? Oh, yeah, and he wanted more money to come back and reshoot it, and then people complained, so then he donated the money to someone. I, I'm real fuzzy on it. <laughs> Yes, exactly what happened. So he, they had reshoots because Kevin Spacey, they didn't want to have him in the movie after the uh, scandal and whatnot. Sure, yeah. So they hired another actor. Well, they had to reshoot his scene. So Mark Wahlberg comes back, but he's like, I don't work for free. Yeah. I get $1.5 million for reshoots. I'm sorry, that's my contract. 
But then this lady, she's like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll go do it for free. This is a big deal for me. I'll just go. It's fine. Then the news gets a hold of it, and they're like, look at this wage gap. How could, how could she possibly get paid? You know, he got paid like 1,000 times more than her, 10,000 times more than her. Look at this discrimination. And I'm like, well, she obviously agreed to get paid less. She agreed to it. It was completely voluntary. That's why. And then he wasn't. He was not agreeable. He was like, no, I'm going to need to get paid. There was literally no controversy there. But yeah, Mark Wahlberg gets shamed into essentially donating his salary to some whatever bullshit cause. It was so stupid. Um, Daniel, have you seen Akira? No. Well, if you enjoyed the world building and the sound design and the music from Ghost in the Shell, I think you'd really enjoy Akira. It's a really good cyberpunk type mm. story. And the world building and the music is amazing. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Oh, so the, I guess I've seen Seven because I also said I had seen Blade Runner. Um, I, that was a I didn't like Blade Runner. Um, I I'm you know in with you. you I didn't like the original. The original. But I like the remake. The oh, remake good. World building is amazing, by the way. Oh, okay, I'm gonna check it out then. But yeah, the original, I just thought, I didn't even get, like, I just thought the story was dull. The, the environment yep. was, was really depressing. Dark and muddy. Yep. Yeah, yep. Who wanted, it's not cool. It's, like, lame. I, I, I didn't, yeah, wasn't a fan. But in general, like, cyberpunk is just super cool to me. Um, one thing that, that really, like, the reason why I got into cyberpunk is I actually saw Ghost in the Shell. And then shortly after that, I saw this documentary um, on YouTube by Wired. Um, and it was about the city Shenzhen in China, and that's kind of like a cyberpunk city, city in, in real life. It's, oh. it's it's like a it's like where all the tech is manufactured, and it's kind of like it's like one of those Asian cities, you know, lots of sky rises, like very built up, but like also like you can like go in like these kind of like slummy streets, and like but there's like people are like dealing electronics on the corner because it's like where all the factories are, so there's all these parts, so everyone's like selling like like keyboard parts or phone parts and like there's these videos of people going to Shenzhen and they build their own iPhone with all the spare iPhone parts there and stuff. And um, it, I just kind of, I just like saw that in the real world and I saw Ghost in the Shell and I got really, I got really into it and I started like listening to um, like cyberpunk mu- like music from like soundtracks and stuff, which is actually kind of, I like the music. It's, it's good. And um, yeah. So, and there's supposedly there's like a video game coming out soon. That's going to be like a, cyberpunk open world which i'm excited for even though i don't play many video games sweet yeah so liam thanks for coming on it's always a pleasure to chat with you yeah sure yeah it's a pleasure as well um yeah cool this was awesome i had fun yeah me too i really enjoyed this conversation i appreciate you coming on yeah i mean this episode reminded me of like a joe rogan episode where they just kind of talk about whatever and the conversation just kind of goes wherever and he's you know the biggest in the business so i don't know there yeah might be some kind of an audience for it yeah I think people. I think people would enjoy it. I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, we we also we do a uh, a hangout with other podcasters. Oh. Yeah, the State of the Union, State of the Libertarian Union talk show. Oh, I didn't know about that actually. Yeah, it's yeah, it's got Pat McFarlane and the Don't Waste Your Hate guys and Subversion webcast. Huh. Kenny the Wizard. Oh, Kenny. Okay, yeah. Foreign policy focus. Oh, Kyle. Yeah, I know Kyle and Kenny. I don't know those other guys. Yeah, those are, they're cool. I, I was on a. Widgetly, what? No, what was it? No, not with it. No, what was it? Yeah, freedom well, his... file. Freedom file. I was on freedom file. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually thinking of, um, of launching a new podcast. I'm kind of talking more about, um, kind of like these cyber security issues that kind of I was getting into a little bit. Um, just because I think there's just a, like I'm telling you guys, like this, this is going to be a huge area of focus in the coming years. Like there's so much money involved now with cryptocurrencies like billions of dollars and soon to be trillions of dollars, like the incentive to hack someone is so high. Like if you hack Bitcoin, you could make billions of dollars easily. Like think about that. Like the, this is going to be a full on cyber war, like the kind that you always heard about. Like we need to focus more on cybersecurity, like the government saying that. Like it's actually kind of true. The government does need to focus on cybersecurity. And I'm telling you, the CIA is going to be hacking. The NSA is going to be hacking. Bitcoin is going to be controlled by like some, some teenager is going to be like, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be people hacking people. Every, it, the more things that are put on digital currencies, which it's inevitable because it's such a superior way of doing it to the current system <laughs> just the more hackability this is all going to have and it's, it's going to get crazy so i'm thinking of creating a podcast to cover that but it'd be interesting i just need to i need to work on my my uh, explanations of it because i think it gets confusing and i i confuse myself when i start talking about it to some degree <laughs> well yeah i mean you, you 
you do have the ability to yeah, dispense with a lot of information at a time. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you could <laughs> bite size chunk it maybe a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I got to work on that. Um, yeah. Practice makes perfect. For sure. Absolutely, man. Okay, well. But you've been a great guest. I just want to let you know. Oh, well, I thank you. I, I, I always look forward to these. You know, anytime, I'm always, I'm always down to come on. Sweet. All right, yeah, man. Sounds good. Well, thanks again, and yeah. uh, you know, let's all get some sleep. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, sounds good. Bye. All right, man. Talk all right. Peace out. Chipmunks. C H I P M U N K. We're the chipmunks. Guaranteed to brighten your day. Do 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 do